I think there's just a need for a secular alternative to AA. There actually is an alternative. Good morning, David. <laughs> oh, did you press record? I did. I pressed record, oh. yes. So we're here to talk about Sam Harris, atheism, spirituality, religious experience, and addiction, recovery, mental health, and how these topics are understood and discussed. And in this clip we're going to watch, which David has not seen before, mm. there's a gentleman in the audience who was at a talk that Sam Harris gave on his waking up about his waking up book. And it's clear this person is struggling with some principles and ideas from Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. And I found this very enlightening. I did not expect to hear Sam's response here, which actually was very quite interesting. So let's play it and then we'll... Okay go from there. Uh, as a lifelong atheist who joined a 12-step program a few oh. years ago, I'm always asked to identify a higher power, and I'm told this is a spiritual quest. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious if you have any thoughts about how that alleged spiritual activity could be framed within the context of what you've talked about, of selflessness. Yeah, well, I think you. there's definitely a... a I think of one that I think there's just a need for a secular alternative to AA. I, mean, I don't, I've got, I just want to interrupt it there because there actually is an alternative. So they have, there's atheism, like a, I don't know. What is it? AA for atheists. Mm -hmm. And there's also AA for agnostics. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not actually sure how those meetings frame this idea of AA or of higher power. I just want to point out that those things actually do exist. I don't know how relevant they are, like, but I know in Toronto they are our meetings. Before we hear Sam yeah. Harris's answer, what what's the the person who's asking the question? He's saying through the twelve step process, he's yes. always being asked to accept a higher power. Correct. What, Correct. Why is that? From your understanding of AA, yeah. Why is that the case? How does that play out with? I, so there's a mentor. There's the person who's in recovery and then someone helping i guess maybe they're both in recovery but who's asking the question okay. asker to be right, in higher right, what is right. like, what's this all about what's okay. the background yes yeah, so step one is admitted we were powerless over alcohol cocaine you know, fill in the blank right admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable okay so step one is simply just i have a problem yeah. and i need help yeah. that's sort of this real sincere admission that you can't control you're using anymore and for people in recovery that unless they acknowledge that there's no hope right mm. there's no hope unless you fully submit to the fact that you're an addict or alcoholic you can't do this anymore and you need help right so step one is admit you have a problem yes and what shortly follows that is step two is came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity so immediately it's like yes i have a problem Step two, you, you need to acknowledge that you need help from an outside source. Can we leave, the, can we leave this in the video? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because it's going to, this is a note to our, one of our future sponsors, Element, the salt electrolyte drink, which is just fantastic and delicious, <laughs> which I love so much. Okay, so. So step one, accept you have a problem. Step two, accept there's a higher power who's going to help you came to believe that a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. Okay. Okay. So, and at the tail end of the question there, the, the gentleman does say, and relate it to this idea of selflessness. Because mm -hmm. in the context of what Sam's talking about in terms of his book, Waking Up, and his approach to meditation and mindfulness, mm -hmm. one of the core lessons we're trying to learn is the illusory nature of the self. So this ego inside our head and brain that's me, myself, I, is actually non-existent. Mm -hmm. So it's a thought pattern in the mind. It's a sensation in the mind. And when we can learn that, it really helps us mm -hmm. in terms of waking up, as Sam would say. Right. Okay, so then what the gentleman is saying here is, in my opinion, he's struggling with us with letting go of his ego, with with letting go of this idea that he has control over reality, so to speak. Right. Right. Because, and this is why the religious aspect of AA or spiritual, it really is spiritual. It's clearly indicated this is a spiritual program, not a religious one that gets in the way of so many people. 
And all that is, in my opinion, is their ego getting in the way of them having a spiritual experience. So he's he's suggesting that what he's maybe reading between the lines. My interpretation is, you know, I'm an atheist. I think he starts by saying as an atheist. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. he doesn't believe in God. He's yeah. not religious. I'm having I'm really having, having a tough time doing this higher power thing. Yes. And you're saying, so he might say, if he was here in this room, he might say, no, no, Mike, I got no ego problem. I just empirically don't agree that there's a God out there that I need to submit to. There's right. no higher power. Right. So stop right. telling me to, to to see something that's just not there. Yes. You're saying that's cover for a shield he's putting up that's actually blocking him from moving forward through the process yes. to recover yes. fully. Yes. yes. Okay. And that's a good clarification. And my, my personal experience and when I talk either in meetings or in other spaces about this topic. What really helped me was all a power greater than myself means fundamentally is not my self-centered ego. Mm. It's not my self will. Mm -hmm. So that's it, right? So I can surrender to a power greater than myself, which is just not my self-centered ego, which at the core, that's what addiction is. It's the self-centered ego that takes control and dominates every decision you make. So how does this relate to the idea of self-help? Hmm, I'm not sure if, if my thought is clear enough. I don't want to confuse anyone. If we don't have a self, mm -hmm. so submitting to a higher power suggests we actually don't have the internal capacity to solve our problems. Correct. Well, I so guess, is, that a, is, yeah. that, is AA like a critique of the idea that we can, on our own, address all pro our problems? It's... Is this whole higher power thing a critique of the idea of self-help? Yeah, great question. No, I think it's important to clarify. So the 12 steps of AA mm -hmm. are very specific to a individual who's struggling with alcoholism. Okay. And clearly, if you're at the point where that is true for you, mm -hmm. you have a problem. So it's very specific. It can be scaled and i think there's lots of the world could greatly benefit from the principles of aa both personally and as a group but this is very specific to the person who's struggling with alcoholism and in order to heal we have to learn to let go of that we have to learn to separate that from ourself in some sense or from this i me mine i need this i need this this is for me I can't do this. I have to control this. Don't tell me what to do. Me, 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 me. So for me, mm. and Sam will get to it here, and I was very surprised by his answer. It's just letting go of the illusion of control. And sorry, to answer your question more specifically, in AA, and this might actually be a critique, is there is a incredible heavy focus on personal responsibility. Mm. Right? So it's... Service. For no others, more... No? You need to take responsibility for the fact that you are an alcoholic. So that, that feels contradictory. Damage. It does a little bit. But or the is problem is that we've struggled so much through the self-will and the ego-driven behavior that we have to let go of that and open up to another idea about this is higher power is just, it's just, again, not my self-will. It could be mm. the group could be another person it could be the universe it could be a tree and actually maybe we should play this well yeah, so just pretty it, yeah. sorry um so it sounds like the way AA is working in these initial steps is so, so the through addiction the self has been so corrupted yes it's it's no longer useful like so that alcoholic can't engage in self-help because this, the self is a destroyer of the, yeah, the person yeah, right yeah 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 it's so then or one aspect so of the to, self. To, to, yeah. so, to help the self. So the self is probably numerous things. It's yes, been dominated yes. in this case yes, by something yeah, negative. Yeah, yeah. Submit to a higher power through that process of personal responsibility, admitting of a problem, um, submitting to a higher power and all the other things AA would ask you to do. You sort of cleanse yourself a bit and there's some religious connotations of like cleanse. Yeah. Yeah. And then you now have a self that it can actually work in, in your favor as opposed to against you. Yeah. Is yeah. that yeah? Is or, that right? Yeah, for me, the emergence of other parts of myself have space to exist. Yes. So the self is multiple things. Yeah. For the alcoholic, the self has become dominated by something negative. Yeah. Yeah. Or but we need yeah. ways to to have the self um, or positive aspects of the self 
become more more dominant in the in that individual's yeah. personality or, yeah or, or they have thinking. more influence over their behavior that's right yeah okay interesting so for me right now i don't struggle with these with the consumption or desire to get higher any or any of that stuff for me right now where this part of my unhealthy self where i'm really struggling is eating food so i have a bad back right now or i've had a bad back for a long time but my self will right now is causing me to eat unhealthily or right. or the addict part of me is just i need immediate relief from how i f- don't feel good because i'm my back is sore or i whatever and i'm drawn to eat unhealthy food and i'm having a hard time with that right now i actually don't know how to get through it but i'm trying to practice submitting some like to accepting help from power greater than myself because i'm trying to do it all by myself right now right so I need to incorporate the principles of the program to help me, I think. Maybe that's a little bit unclear thought, but that, it's like I have this internal struggle. And mm-hmm. the part of me that helped me recover from addiction, in some ways in this case, has been suppressed or something like that. And the other part of me that's selfish and scared and uncertain and wants instant gratification is controlling my consumption of eating unhealthy food. So we have multiple selves. Or one self with multiple components. But then someone might say we don't have a self. So because you started out your comment. Yeah, yeah. But hold on. Let me, let's just yeah, stick yeah, on yeah. this point. So <laughs> let's say, let's, assuming we have a self. Yeah. We have, it, it's multifaceted. Yes. And under certain conditions, the darker aspects will, will dominate. And yes. in other conditions, the positive. And we need to figure out the mental health journey or the journey of a therapist is to figure out how to have those positive components of the self become predominant in one's personality yes. structure yes yes and that happens by learning to relate to the unhelpful part of ourselves as opposed to making them go away right that's i think a lot of people struggle with that concept and to bring it back yeah. to what this guy's yeah. asking yeah there's a part of him that's blocked right well i don't obviously it's not fair to do his right. as we would say in the program his inventory Although it's a very clear pattern of there's something in him that thinks, again, this is a hypothesis, but it's common in myself and others. There's a part of us that thinks if I let go of my self-centered ego and give give my or just let go and mm-hmm. allow guidance from others or the universe that somehow that makes us weak or somehow that makes us vulnerable or somehow something bad is going to happen because we're so contracted by this need to control everything because we're in pain. Right. That, so I think that's part of what's happening with this situation. Right. So let someone else help you. Yeah. That's really what that step is about. Let yes. Stop trying to help yourself. You're not in a situation right now that you can't help. There's this movie. My cousin tells me about it. It's someone's saying who here reads self help books and everyone puts their hand up. And he says, well, stop. Your self sucks. You know this movie? <laughs> yeah. No. But that's it's like it's a, it's a line where like you're not in a place to I think it was meant to be a joke. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Though. But it's like like you can't you're not you're stop. Like, yes. you're, you need someone else. Yes. You need something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess maybe that's a, a big barrier for a lot of people to go and even to see a therapist. For sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So you're saying in this case for the question asker, a hypothesis might be this is something that's standing in his way for, from moving forward. Exactly. Yes. In his own journey. Okay. And just the one last point yeah. you said the self doesn't exist. There's this con- contradiction here. It's not so much that the self doesn't exist or that we don't in practical terms, we need a sense of self to guide us through the world. Mm -hmm. So we need our egos. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, what we learn through meditation practice is that in some sense, it's just a thought pattern. It's just like an experience in our conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. The same way we hear traffic outside, the same way we see lights and color in this room, Mm -hmm. the same way there's material reality. Mm -hmm. These things all just appear in our conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of the self is just another appearance in our conscious awareness that we, we do need it in a way. It's the attachment to it that causes the suffering. Right. The obsession with it. Yes. Right. Okay. Interesting. Let's go back. I don't, I've got nothing against AA except I keep hearing from people who wish there was an alter, alternative that, that didn't require this sort of 
sign on the dotted line of what seemed to be like something like religion. But I think you can just reframe that and actually sign on the dotted line because it's all a higher power. I mean, it's all your, your sense of who you are in the present moment can't explain anything. Again, you can't explain how you're able to do this. I mean, this, is, this is a high, as far as I'm concerned, this is a higher power. This is a, a total mystery. I don't know how I start it. I don't know how I stop it. Um, and everything is like that. And so it's, it, you're in a condition that is uh, intrinsically mysterious and you're thinking and then thoughts keep arising. And that's, you know, and so it's, um, yeah, I don't, it doesn't seem like a stretch to me to, to accept a, a higher power. So there we go. That was a pretty short, concise answer. Now the guy doesn't respond. So Sam just very simply addresses the question. Maybe he doesn't go too deep, but everything is a higher power. Mm -hmm. So we have this internal. So maybe another helpful thing to say is when I entered in to the steps, my interpretation of what a higher power meant or this word God mm -hmm. was so narrowly defined by Western civilization in terms of the Abrahamic religions. Right. I thought God meant Jesus Christ, right? Or Allah or the Bible or Christianity. Right. My interpretation of what God or higher power meant was just super narrow. And I think Sam simply addresses that here. Right. The fact that, th that, we, that we can open and close our hands. The fact that when you put a seed in a pot and you water it, the plant grows. Mm -hmm. That is a higher power. That mm -hmm. is this I, transcendent wonder of life that's inexplicable. So, and Sam is telling the question asker, just accept, just submit to that idea. Or, or he does start out his, his answer by saying, maybe there should be an, a secular alternative yeah. to AA. Which and there then is. says, Which there is. well, yeah. you know, there's a high power everywhere. There's lots of things that are so mysterious that yes. you can't fully explain. Yes. I don't know how this starts and how this stops. Yes. Right? Like, how did, they, what, like, how did that actually happen? Like, I know I'm thinking about yeah. it. Like, yeah. oh, like, do this and then stop doing that. Yes. But that's, how does this go from here to here? Yeah. At least for me, it's mysterious. Maybe through a neuroscientist, it wouldn't be. I don't know. But he's saying, I guess, he, okay, so he's telling the person who asked the question, just give in to the fact that things are mysterious and you need to, which is actually a different, he's okay. He's saying give in because there's well, so much mysterious. Not so much there. give in, just acknowledge, acknowledge yeah. the become aware of the mystery of, which is the a universe. different, which is so, so accept the step he says, because things are mysterious and you, we don't know a lot of stuff, which is a different logic to what AA and what we just yeah. spoke about is saying, which is, relinquish your or give up yourself or submit yourself to a higher power in order to decenter the negative self that has been so mm. corrupting yeah 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 it's a nice it's way different. to put it he's not he's just saying hey it's mysterious he's he's like more of like accept the, the empirical proposition that there's a higher power we're talking about accept the higher power or aa is, thing, is saying accept the higher power because it's actually the best way to move forward in your life and to get out of the current position in which you're in Yes, and it also... So maybe to the question asker, yeah. the, the answer might not be persuasive. Maybe not, maybe not. Because I would, if someone was saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in this stuff, I'd be like, well, fair, yeah. but maybe the right... The, think about it as a tool to help you move forward. Think about it as a tool right. to help you rethink what you're doing and who you are. Yeah, okay, fine. You don't have to think that there's something out there doing stuff, but you do need to surrender in some way in order to change your thought pattern a bit. Yes. There's, there's a, um, in some of the literature, it says, we don't have to believe in a God. We have mm. to stop believing that we are God. Yes. And right. that's that sense of self, that ego control. So yeah. th this raises an, a related question. Uh, it's something I've thought about, um, which is, is the mental health community inadvertently promoting this sort of like narcissism, self-obsession that AA is suggesting is so problematic. Like we're so worried about self care and we're so like, how do I feel? And mm. I felt disrespected and I need to mm -hmm. center myself mm -hmm. all the time and make myself safe. Yeah. And I feel hurt and everything's me, me, me. <laughs> and I'm wondering if that's an unintended consequence of good intentions, but seems inconsistent with AA and maybe it's not actually helping people. Yeah. I think. Do you see that self obsession in some of the people you work with or in your just 
observations of the mental health community? Mm -hmm. I think, well, I see it in myself. Okay. I, I, yeah. I'm aware of that part of myself. Mm. I'm, I'm not attached to it anymore. Or I can create some space mm. so I can watch and see it and not react from there and get caught up in it. And I try to react more or I try to respond more from that open, non-judgmental, non-attached self, which, as the neuroscience says, doesn't actually exist. Mm -hmm. So there is no center of the self in our brain. That's part of that idea, right? Mm. So the all modern neuroscience is doing is is confirming what we've known for thousands of years. Mm. There is no self. It, um, to the question of letting go or surrendering or opening up to the non-self, maybe you could say, and how modern pop psychology or therapy culture may be dominating things, is that, yes, all of that is so obsessed with a sense of self, mm -hmm. with the illusion that there's a me and an identity behind my experience. Mm -hmm. And all that does is just make it worse. Yeah. It just makes it worse. And I do want to tie one last thing to yeah. step three. Okay, step three is... Hold on. So one is accept the problem. Two, accept the higher power. I know there's wording yeah, is yeah. different. And or, three... or two is let go of the self-centered egoic will. Okay. Or accept a higher power. Yeah. I really think it's it's help, more helpful in this context that it's about letting go of your self-centered will. We, mm. That point has to be driven, smashed into our stubborn heads. Step three is turn my life and will over to the care of God as I understand God or I understood God, mm -hmm. praying only for the knowledge of God's will for me and the power to carry that out. I may have messed up the words a tiny bit, but that's the gist of it. Mm. So that it reinforces this turn my will and life over to the care of God as I understand God. So it's not to Jesus Christ or whoever, Allah or whatever. It's just let go of this sense of self and turn it over to maybe as Sam was saying, just the sense of awe, the sense of wonder, mm -hmm. the sense of non-self. Then we can ask, so praying only for the knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. So that, Second part answers also this idea that because in modern pop psychology and therapy culture and safetyism, we rely, instead of relying on the universe or the sense of awe to guide us, mm -hmm. we rely on more self, more egoic, self-centered self, mm -hmm. right? So you need to protect me or the administration needs to protect me or... My parents need to do this for me or my right. teacher's responsible for my well-being or right. whatever. That's not helpful. So that was in, in response to this will, self-centeredness, dominating identity in our modern world and causing suffering for people in the mental health space. The, so the, the third step is, you're saying is turn yourself over to the care of God. Yeah. Now, or a why, higher power. Or a higher power. Yeah. Why, why can't just... Why, why didn't AA or why can't people just interpret that as turn yourself over to the service or care of others? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So is it, it's probably very easy to have a secular version or an yeah. atheistic version of AA. 100%. Like it, yeah. Step three just needs to be, you know, okay. One, accept of a problem. Two, some decenter yourself or yes, however you want yes, to work. Yes. And three is start doing some stuff for other people. Focus your attention on their well-being. Yes. Which as you, uh, is that, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. Cause in that process, yeah. which relates to some of your earlier questions, when we free ourselves or as we free ourselves from the grip of the ego and the self-centeredness through the steps, which mm -hmm. is just a process of healing, we then get rooted and grounded so that we can help others. Mm. Okay. We just have to start, we have to clean house first, R right? right? And develop the sense of, of knowing how to deal with this ego and, and right. problematic self-referential experience. And through the help of others, we become someone who can then help others. So step three is sort of like, I like what you said about um, you know, the, the role of like wonder and it's like, yeah. okay. So in step three, I'm starting to think about walking around and be like, Oh, that's, that's an, 
beautiful tree like oh the wind just oh it's starting to rain a mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. like is that is, is yeah. it that kind of thing so yeah. i guess you're yeah. right at yeah. step yeah. three yeah. you're not ready the, the the person might not be ready to be like all right i'm gonna go volunteer i'm gonna get my you know no. my no. trainee as a therapist or whatever right. it's actually it's just gonna be like all right i'm gonna stop obsessing about myself yeah, yeah, i'm gonna yeah, walk yeah, around yeah, noticing yeah. other things yes and that's it it's, it's just maybe the noticing yeah it's actually okay. slightly discouraged Okay. To go help people. You're not because ready you yet. get on a soapbox, you think every, you've got everything figured out yeah. and that you've yeah, healed yeah, yeah, yeah. and blah blah blah. Right. And okay. And that that's an interesting experience you see often in people is when they start to sober up or recover, they they want to help, which is yeah. genuinely beautiful to see. We just need to be reminded that there's a process. We can't right. get ahead of ourselves and if we follow the process, we heal, we recover, and then we're in a position to give back to others. Right. Really starts with me was my attempt to bring the gifts of AA to the world. And here we are 11 years later <laughs> trying, oh, right. trying to do that, I guess. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think we're out of time. I think so too. Anything, Thank you. Any last? No. No, it's super interesting. Um, I hope people watch this one. Yeah, me too. And so for anyone out there, again, if you're struggling with turning your will over or this idea of a higher power, it's not that complicated. Maybe... My sponsor always said to me, you can decide not to decide. So for now, if you want to just decide that it doesn't matter if there's a higher power or not, why don't you just put that question on the shelf and do what you know you need to do to heal and recover? Because that's what matters. It doesn't matter. Higher power, all this shit doesn't matter. Really. Actually, one other point is, mm. and maybe we can talk about this another time. So you mean that the the, yeah. fr- the words, the the words don't matter. matter. The content matters, yeah. but not the yeah. jargon. The words don't it. matter, and that's part of the recovery process. Right? Is stop get fixated obsessing them. over this what matter. other what you think these things mean, and what other people think they mean. What matters is that you recover and heal. Yeah, and that it's just another example that this is in the way of healing. Yeah, and and lastly to what you said about maybe our obsession and self-care culture and Mm -hmm. over therapized society is it's another example of just this attachment to identity Mm. and generating a sense of self from the identity and how that just causes suffering. Right. We just get in this trap. I'm a person, I'm an atheist, I'm a this, I'm a that, therefore I can't do this. Right. That, that is not helpful. And so we're trying to let go of that. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, David. That was awesome. Okay. Bye, everybody. I hope you like that. Oh, I guess I should say don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you. Bye. Mm. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.